All right, everybody. Go. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is uh, a th the uh, from my end a third episode where I'm interviewing a couple of guys, but it's not really an interview. It's more of like an informal uh, chat between uh, like-minded people. Um, but if you guys haven't heard, I'm with the Grimerica Boys, as people call them, uh, Darren and Graham. How you guys doing? Very good. Good. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Hey, I'm I'm happy to be able to join you guys again um, for a, lo a lot since the last time I was on your show. Um, I've had a lot of new listeners come in and just say, "Hey, I, I heard you guys. I heard you on Gramerica. Now I'm glued to the channel. So I have to thank you guys for that. That's really oh, awesome. that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and one of the things I wanted to ask you guys um, before we actually get pretty deep into some other stuff are because I know you guys started in 2013. And you guys must have had some sort of initial goals that you wanted to uh, ah. pursue. How have those goals, what were those goals and how did they change to this point? What'd you say? You should go first. I don't know. At the, honestly, at the beginning, we just, our goal was to just talk with really interesting people and have great conversations. And we really didn't know where it could go. We really didn't, you know, we, we had hoped that, you know, we could maybe get some listeners, have interesting conversations, maybe uh, open up some dialogue and some good conversations on mysteries and ancient history and all kinds of stuff. But I don't think we had a, a real goal in mind. Maybe. Not a conscious one. No. Anyway, you know, it was mostly just like, yeah, for a laugh, really. It was mostly just for, you know, something to do. We were bored. Because Darren was like, well, we could do the podcast because I, I turned him on to podcasting and I've been listening for years by then. And uh, he was like, well, we could do that. And then we decided to do the interview style and, and it just started flowing from there. I mean, I, I honestly, it, in some ways, I wish we would have intended on something so I could kind of measure how we did against it, like in a manifestation sort of We'd way. We'd probably but, be further ahead now yeah, if we would yeah, have been measuring. Yeah, because we just kind of just followed the flow and our <clears throat> our our uh, interest as we went along so but i mean we're super happy of where it's come to i mean it's it's been an amazing journey and you know i think we got in there at the right time where it was still kind of growing like six seven years ago yeah seven it's years. funny yeah it's yeah. funny because we thought we were gonna be too late we thought yeah. we were too late and when we were coming out with the show i remember even rpj was like you know there's a lot of shows out there already it seems like and now when people ask me today i'm like oh fuck no it's perfect time to start a podcast the, you know, it's just all just catching steam. Audiobooks, podcasts, all the people are just sort of getting to realize all this stuff that they can do with their phone other than text and do social media. Absolutely. Um, I would say compared to my goal, my goals were a little bit more uh, specific, but then I now they've kind of become more broad, Be, kind of mainly because of what I was talking about pre, uh, right before we started recording with Graham. Um, there's just so much stuff to keep track of. And now that so much time, it's, almost, it's coming up on two years since I've started the channel. I mean, it just came and went really quickly. And my initial goal was to just get the, the stuff out there because, like, like I said, there's a lot of information. But what really inspired me to start the channel, and I swear this is the last thing I'm going to say about myself before we actually go into the other stuff, um, was I would read the same article with just people in my life and we would come away with different opinions. And then when I would ask them about that opinion, they would have misinterpreted the data that like their reading comprehension was just subpar. So part of my channel was going through it with the fine tooth comb with the listener and then uh, have the discussion from there. So it's almost kind of like a tool to try to be on the same page with people. Granted there are, you know, that backfires in some ways like they're, you know, there are like toxic people in the comments and, and that type of stuff. But for the most part, um, I think the community has been great. And as, as more and more information has come along, it just seems like my, I, I don't know what my perspective has changed, uh, mainly because of, uh, issues with, uh, obscured human history, which is mainly what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what, let me ask you guys before we start going through the rabbit hole, um, up to date, what's your current model of history? Like, let's just go back, um, from recorded history to now, 
do you think most of it is bullshit? Do you think some of it is based in truth? Do you think there's some sort of hijacking that went on where the the what's taught in schools is completely different from th this obscured history? What do you guys think? I know that's a huge question, but yeah, it is a huge question, and it's it's a question that I I can never seem to answer because every every time I talk to a new guest or learn a little bit more. It completely changes. You know, I'm reading this book called Genesis Six Conspiracy right now, and it's bringing in a deeper understanding for me of the Nephilim and and the secret societies that sort of the bloodlines that go all the way back to like you know Cain and and um, uh, Enoch and and then Hermes is in there, kind of. So it's uh, man, it's a tough tough one because I. I used to like the kind of the alien inter intervention kind of theory, but part of me flip flops back and forth between this whole thing is is just a false narrative on purpose, and part of me thinks that it's just a um, um, people not really purposely pulling the wool over eyes, but just it's just incompetence kind of people yeah. stuck in their little narrow silos, and it's just been incompetence in the the way the scientific machine is moving that it can't be. It can't be turned quick enough, and there's a bunch of people like yourself that are putting all this stuff out there that changes slowly but surely changes the paradigm of how old, like you know, like Bruce Fenton stuff that goes back to like eight eight hundred thousand years. Like, is that more accurate? But even the mainstream sci scientists are saying that it's back to like three or four hundred years now. So everything keeps shifting further back and further back, but it doesn't really move the ship yet. So exactly. I, I kind of tend to think right now that it's just incompetence and. Of course, there's some there's some aspect of the elite sort of secret society that keep a lot of this occult stuff to themselves, and that ties into our history. Like when I was watching your videos yesterday, and I was thinking about like the stuff on Doggerland and all. Like this stuff should be talked about all the time, and nobody's talking about it. it, or at least you know in our in our pop culture right now, because it's like they don't want us to go back and see that. There used to be a land bridge between the UK and and mainland Europe, you know, and and the ice sheet came down. They don't even want to address those kind of things because it seems like that'll just open up a can of worms. So, I think it's a bit of a bit of that, like obfuscation now because they don't want to go back and change history to more of a truthful thing, and incompetence moving up towards where we are today with people just looking in their silos and before people could. Like yourself, look at all these different, um, like that's one of our favorite guests is these people that come on that can pull, pull all the different science together more of like in a generalist way and put together a picture yes. that we've never been able to see before because we haven't had access to it all. Yeah, like, cr know, like cross-examining all the data out there and trying yeah. to come up with a different, yeah. uh, like a higher, I call it a higher resolution photo, basically. Like yeah. Right now it's pretty fuzzy, but every yeah. passing month and month it gets a little bit clearer, a little bit clearer. Yeah. Because yeah. the archaeologist isn't doing it, the anthropologist isn't doing it, the geologist isn't doing it. They're all looking at their own thing. Exactly. And it's telling you put it all together. And it's telling us there's a different, way different picture. Yeah, we can see it happening now too. Like, and obviously all over parts of different uh, types of hi world history, but specifically in North and South America, like the peopling of the Americas. Uh, if you ask somebody like 10 years ago, like someone in academia, they, there, there'd be no question that they would say, yeah, Clovis was first. There was nobody living in North America beyond, uh, the, like beyond the, the, ice, the, the end of the last ice age. So that's like 13,000 years ago. Before then, it was just nobody. Now it's, there's all this new stuff, especially with genetics and uh, uh, underwater ar uh, marine archaeology. And um, I remember last time I talked to you guys, again, bringing up Doggerland, how they're trying to map um, these ancient, it's called the ancient frontiers project. And they're just trying to map these ancient coastlines and stuff like that. And part of that is because of technology. Like a lot of people ask why, how come just all this stuff is just coming up now? Um, like these are a lot of the hardcore skeptics who don't really accept any of the data. They think it's either manufactured like, Oh, they found bones here. How do you know they just didn't plant them there? Like there's always yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and I, I guess they have, from a hardcore skeptic's perspective, if I put myself in their shoes, I guess that makes sense if you want to poo-poo all the evidence. But then you also have to, cr that's when you have to start cross-examining stuff. Like, genetics is a great one. It's a really hard science that you could reproduce, basically. Like, it's, it's, ba it's basically, you can't poo-poo that evidence because it's hard. 
it's there. It's been examined. They're, the people have written papers on it. It's not something like uh, like history or or archaeology. Yeah, yeah, anthropology where it's malleable. You can kind of yeah. warp the data to make it yeah. fit your perspective. Yeah, but with genetics, you can't do that. That's a good point, and that's one of the things that's that makes me think that it's not all on purpose because those things are changing as technology changes and people are finding out. And that's one of the things that seems to be shifting every year or two. There's a new theory about what we're connected to in our past history through genetics. So what, what do you think about that? The ancient history, like, did you hear the overall question? Yeah, but I, I mean, for one thing, if, if it's, uh, I mean, depending on the nature of reality, history could be a lot less, you know, I mean, maybe we find all those errors in history because that shit didn't actually happen because it's all just part of the back fucking story for the program or whatever. Well, here you go. You get know? Fucking well, I mean, there's that you got to take that aspect into it because if you, if you get into that, if you can digitize it or, or you're thinking like simulation or simulate or it, like it tends, tends to look, then, you know, it, kind of opens up the place for out of, out of place artifacts and all that stuff can kind of get in more but I mean no I don't I, I, I probably agree with Graham for the most part but I think wow. that there's a lot of obfuscation probably on purpose oh 100% and I, I, def I, I no I'm sorry go ahead yeah I think they're like trying to there's a, there's a lot of money and there's a lot there's a lot of control i think it's a lot easier to control us as crazy as it sounds i think it's a lot easier to control us when we're hyper individualized absolutely yeah there is definitely some sort of agenda dri driven stuff in regards to that as far as the simulation and stuff like aliens go um i i don't like to poo poo anything because if there's some sort of evidence there i'm all ears i like to put that stuff in my back pocket because yeah. th especially the simulation because it's it, Logically, it, I mean, there's a lot of, um, like, you have to put yourself in, like, you kind of have to suspend belief in certain parts, right? But, like, as I far as, like... I think you do. Well, as far as, like, base reality. and Well, I, I'm sorry, that came out wrong. Um, Until you get to quantum, right? Yeah, like, yeah. As soon as you hit quantum level, then the simulation starts making a whole lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. And But I feel like that's a door that you don't necessarily have to go through in order to analyze other stuff in other disciplines, right? I mean, it could very well be a simulation. I'm not against it. I don't, I don't, I'm not a disbeliever. Um, I'm definitely open to it. It, it could be just history, like you said, especially when you go far back like a million years ago, 800,000 years ago, where like physical aspects of stuff start to deteriorate and they, don't, they just turn into something else. Um, it, it, it simulation is a really good way of like gener like accounting for that history um but the problem is i can't like if, if i sat down with someone i couldn't explain the proof to someone like to a normal person you know what i mean that's just like way too out there same thing with aliens too um and same thing with to a lesser extent like gods and religion too that's how the ancient people tried to explain things um but uh anyway uh I, Speaking of Bruce Fenton, I just kind of want to switch. I don't want to change the subject, but this is tangentially uh, relevant to what we're talking about. Um, Bruce Fenton, I don't know if you guys saw the interview with him, but he talked a lot about 800,000 years ago. That yep. 800,000, especially in light of, of this thing that they found in uh, Laos. Do you guys know about that? That crater that indicates there's a huge... Well, anyway, okay. So for the listeners that don't know... Was it in the book? It, was no. that Laos in the book? No. I don't know. Or was, that, was, that, was that afterwards? No. Oh, in Bruce's book? Uh, no, Danielle's book, I think. His, his oh, Danielle's wife. book. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know if they mentioned the crater in the book, but they did okay. mention a okay. divergence of, of humans. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's what I'm trying to say is there was a divergence of humans, uh, of our ancient human ancestors. So Neanderthals, Homo sapiens, Denisovans, we all had a common ancestor around 800,000 to a million years ago. And at that point, two interesting things happened. One is what Danielle was talking about and Bruce was talking about, that divergence. And two was this huge impact that, that makes the Younger Dryas event look like minuscule. And they, <laughs> they found, um, they found the, the smoking gun in Laos. They, they pinned it down. And again, around, right around the same time, 800,000, 790,000 years ago, give or take, this event happened. Now, just because they happened in the same uh, 
date doesn't necessarily mean that they are linked, but it, it's very inter interesting data point, right? That, that those things, a crazy extraterrestrial object hits the earth. And then right around the same time, not long after a, a shitload of humans come into existence and spread across the earth and start diverging. Right. Yeah. And again, it doesn't have to be like alien. It could be just it, panspermia. It could stuff. be panspermia. Yeah. And, um, so th this is what I was talking about earlier. I didn't know this last year, right? So ju it's almost like this channel and your channel and people uh, that cover this subject, the hosts and the scientists, they're all learning together. It's like this communal yeah. experience. Yeah, and you, yeah. Can, you can track how, pe especially if they have Twitter and they use Twitter a lot or Facebook or, what or whatever, you can track their sentiment, right? Um, so... One thing I noticed is it seems to be there seems to be a pattern going on. There seems to be some sort of event that happens and then an, an explosion in other areas, like whether it's genetics, culture, religion, ideology. It seems like there's always something going on. And I'm starting to suspect whether conscious or unconsciously, as Bruce, Bruce this, he thinks it's, it's, con it's totally conscious and by design. Um, he thinks that there's some sort of hidden hand guiding history, whether it's a person or just a higher intelligence or even something as innocuous as an idea. Um, once that's out there, it goes viral in a sense, right? So um, I want to connect this to the, the retrovirus episode that I did very recently. So the human placenta, right? So when a woman has a baby, there's a placenta that grows. And then once uh, that will allegedly right it's like this <laughs> it's like this purple thing the chinese call it the purple river boat that's what yeah. it's called yeah um that they traced that it, it evolved from a protein that came from a, an ancient retrovirus like hiv so at some point before then people were laying not people but but animals were laying eggs and the ba so the baby would be in the egg and it would be have this prepackaged nutrients right that's what the yolk is right and that's what how it would survive but then at some point, some, some proto, let's call it a proto mammal, they got this, they got infected with this virus and then there was this mutation and then they started passing it on. That's the, narr that's the genetic narrative anyway, right? Whether you agree with that or not, what, you don't even have to believe in evolution for that to be true because a virus, it, they say, probably evolved with, along with the first ever cell because in order for a virus to exist, it needs to feed off the cell, right? So, so it wouldn't make sense otherwise. Like, why would a virus come out of nothing when, when a cell would come uh, along with it and they would live inside of it, right? Kind of like mitochondria, right? Mitochondria is the same thing. It's not native to us. It's, it's like it has a parasitic relationship that gets passed on from person to person. Well, what's a, what's a virus? Where does that come from? It's just information that encodes itself in a host and it kind of hijacks excuse me, it hijacks the host and it reprograms how they live their life, right? It reprograms its purpose. So I was thinking, okay, the, it hi a retrovirus hijacks biology in the same way ideas hijacked a society, right? Or hijack individuals, right? Because what do you, you guys know as well as I do throughout history, um, once certain populations, especially once they get big, there's going to be uh there's going to be disagreements right so if you infect a population with a, a ideology especially one that benefits like a select group of people or, or power or whatever it's in their best interest to kill off anybody else who's not infected by the virus right so um i guess my point is that this could be that hidden hand that Bruce is talking about. It, it, it's not necessarily a, a, a shadowy group of people. It might be now, but back then, 800, 900,000 years ago, it could have been something like a virus, like something at the, at the molecular level that could have been doing this. Now, then I started to think about, and sorry if I start ranting, guys, if you guys want to say no, anything. No, 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 it's good. Okay. Um, then I started to think about um, like historical narratives, um, why anything would be would have an interest in 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 doing this why why would anyone want to uh treat us as if like we're a petri dish on the earth right especially if you ask a flat earther like the, the petri dish uh thing really becomes more of a of a interesting symbol because you know it's supposed to be flat and there's supposed to be like a dome or something and and the moon's not supposed to be that far all that stuff 
by the way, I'm not a flat earther, but I, I've talked to a lot of them. And we've talked ju just about this. Are we getting glimpses of hidden history here and there now since we have the internet, um, since we have this technology that's evolving? Um, last time I talked to you guys, there's a piece of hidden history that we talked about the Scythians, remember? We were talking about how these people from the Caucasus, came, they, they, were, they, they were able to tame horses. They were the first group of humans allegedly that were able to do that. And then what happened? They had a skill that no one else had and they exploited it, right? Or they made use of it however you look at it and what happened well they they basically seeded uh western europe and and every like that part of the world that we know today with their genes right the romans even said so themselves that's why the, the that's why we have the word german right german people that it can't come from a germ like an apple like the, the the romans saw like wow there's a ton of these people here already they all have their own culture completely different from ours they don't seem to have a strat stratified society like we do. Um, they And so they just referred to them as something completely different from themselves. And then you guys know the rest of history. Right? They per <laughs> Instead of coexisting with them, they just persecuted them and exploited them and, and uh, did a mass genocide and warred with them for centuries. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I, <laughs> that, that was kind of a tangent there. My point is that there's all, all these different glimpses of hidden history so i was wondering if you guys noticed the same thing and do you guys have any ideas about that i wonder if we won't be looking back at the romans and the greeks in thousands of years and blaming those motherfuckers for getting these governments started <laughs> i mean no the roman real. the greeks started it and the fucking romans perfected it and we might never get rid of this shit so you want to talk about ideas infecting the future we might humans might have had we're on a completely different fucking path before we got to this government and yeah. you know the romans got it in in such a way that we're not we're, the idea of not having a government is fucking astounding to everybody yeah and it's just like you know, and it, you know, there's an interesting point you made on viruses and a virus making us uh, start to carry our young on board instead of eggs. It's like we kind of got this view of viruses today that they're the enemy, and um, I'm not sure. I, I'm starting to wonder if that's much the case. I mean, no one wants to get sick, or no one wants someone they love to get uh, sick and die, but. You know, at the same time, relativity tells us that there's no action without an equal and opposite reaction. So, you know, if the if you get this sickness and it lays you out for a week and a half, but then you bounce back, well, what else was happening in the background in that week and a half when you couldn't get out of bed? Is that somehow eating your evolution? Because, I mean, we've kind of co upgrading you. Have you ever felt better yeah, when you come yeah. back from a sickness? You're sort of coexisting on this world with all the like, and the, and like you say, you're all this different shit. You're you've got different gut biomes controlling you here, and you got other bacteria controlling you there, and then you know we've decided these ones that make us not feel good for a little while. And I don't know a whole lot about, you know, maybe there's. Maybe, like, maybe there is an easy way to tell what a good bacteria is and not a good bacteria. But I mean, I think we're starting to see evidence now that some of these, like, is, I think tuberculosis is a big one, right? Like, tuberculosis used to be not a big deal for most people, and it was everywhere. There was fucking, I think it's tuberculosis is what I'm thinking of. It was like in all the fucking water, and everybody sort of dealt with it at some point in your life. And now we've taken it out of it, and, and nobody ever gets tuberculosis, but it wasn't like it was a huge problem. And I mean, you could argue that to get tuberculosis in today's society might be a non-issue. Right. When you've got... Yeah, what about the measles protecting you from to, future cancers? Yeah, like, I mean, there's evidence coming out now that the measles might be protecting you from future cancers. Turns out tuberculosis was protecting you from maybe some autoimmune stuff. Mm -hmm. And all. so, you know, it's like we've sterilized the world to such a point And so this is me stepping away from blaming vaccines for fucking causing all these autoimmune diseases. Maybe it's the vaccines do work and they work too well. And we've sterilized this world to such a fucking point that our immune system is bored. Oh, so for sure. It's fucking turning on us in all these different ways that are presenting themselves as different autoimmune diseases. Our immune system is getting flabby, basically. It's not hitting the gym I mean, anymore. You know? Maybe the, you can escape that mortality rate and stay as healthy as we'd like to be as a society. And I mean, it's a terrible thing to say, but 
you know, maybe those things do sort of strengthen some. And, and I, I mean, I don't know. It's a thing. But there's definitely something to a symbiotic relationship with different viruses and pathogens and stuff like that. So what do you think about it? Do you think that's by design? Do you think there's some higher intelligence, like some invisible... Well, maybe influence? some fucking bacteria is running the world. Maybe it doesn't have to be alien. Yeah. Well, look I at talks. We, we have no plasmosis, fucking idea, eh? no way of knowing what the intelligence level of some of these things are. I mean, look those fucking talks. mushrooms that are down in the soil might be running the fucking place. I mean, it looks like all of North America is connected by the mil- I can't remember the word mycelium. mycelium. Oh, is right. like the biggest living thing on the planet now, and we didn't even fucking know about it a hundred years ago. Yeah. It's like the so, size I mean, of the state of Washington or something, right? How do we know that some other thing isn't some small, minute seeming thing that's in everyone is sort of because you know what? I mean, I was just talking to Russ Russ um Allen. Russ Allen about um Fuck, I lost my train of thought. No. <laughs> no, it's a book he's telling me to read. Gods of Eden or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the title of the book is. But it's it basically goes back through all of these fucking um, wars. Every war in human history. And his comes up with the same thing. There's some He comes up with aliens. But his thing is, it seems like someone else is running the show oh. when it comes to all these wars someone starting these wars and it's like is it just terrible humans that are up to shady shit doing it or or is it something more is it reptilians is oh it, my god i was thinking this i mean stuff. maybe reptilians isn't that he's a reptile maybe it's that that that's how it's presented itself over a thousand years of right. fucking zigging and zagging and confusing and broken telephone and reptilian is really just the ancient word for this fucking bacteria that started coming around or got out of control and you know, here we are. Exactly. Thinking we're thinking we have free will. Yeah, that kind of puts Plato's allegory of the cave in a completely different light, right? Because when I first heard of the allegory of the cave, I just felt like I, I immediately thought about like propaganda and like you know all these man-made ty- types of uh, issues that come along with like a controlling government. But then it made me realize like maybe Plato was just talking about like all these other influ- like biological influences, like climate, all the, all of these things, all of these variables that we don't think about. I like to call them just invisible uh, variables, right? Um, that are, that just comes with this existence, right? Um, so yeah, that's, that's a really interesting uh, thing, Darren. Um, you, you totally took the words right out of my mouth. Cause that reptilian thing, it, it doesn't mean like, I don't think it means you have green skin and you look like a, like you're in like a bag of flesh or something like that. It's more like a, a, a quality. Maybe there's something like toxic, toxoplasmosis where you have no fucking clue who has it and who doesn't, but it's subtly affecting how you act and react. And yeah. Yeah. The cat, the I can't cameras. remember. I was, that was like a tangent from what I was wanted to, what were we talking about? H- hidden what history. Was the <laughs> <laughs> like glimpses of glimpses of hidden history. Like where have you? Where has it been apparent? Like last time we talked, I I talked about like uh, the Scythians, um, and I talked a little bit about Doggerland, and all that is like obscured history, right? Because that seems like a big deal, a huge landmass, yeah. one hundred and eighty thousand kilometers, like square kilometers. I mean, you would you would think that some you think historian. It's possible? You know when I because you know, and I used to think it was possible, but now when I start thinking like ten thousand is a long time. Ten thousand is what five hundred generations. Something right? like that. Yeah. So let's go a hundred thousand. Now you're talking about five thousand fucking generations. Mm-hmm. I don't think that it's in our abilities to really track of real history i don't think you know it's it's too convoluted by this point i mean the closest thing you're gonna get is maybe some randall carlson Mm -hmm. noticing i think geology's one good way to look at it archaeology is probably mostly pseudoscience Mm -hmm. but i mean you've got a bunch of different conflicts in there you got the mongols taking over all of europe at one point um it, so much history has been lost and erased and rewritten, and history is his story. 
Yeah. You know, it's whoever fucking won. So if an entire culture gets annihilated, you know, that's gone. Oh, and and yeah. and anyone gets to come up with what the fuck happened before that. So we don't know that everything before, like, we don't know that everything's not fake. It could all be fucking fake. It could all be bullshit from some fucking guy that had. And and now we're getting to the point where we're we're pretty sure that there used to be some sort of global society. You know, yeah. it's not crazy to think that most. I would say that most people that are fairly up to speed on where we're at these days, it's seen. You know, there's Egyptian shit here, and there's this stuff there. It's pretty obvious that there used to be some sort of. Um, well, look at this. I mean, this society. was this was Doggerland connected in f- 5500 BC. Yeah, so that after means you had a global that was, society. That was after the Under Dryas, and it was connected to the UK. Like even then, people were yeah. convoluting stuff. So how did it get to be an old global society? Was it by the point of a gun, or was it, you know, how much? So and yet the Vikings, it could have been super convoluted even before it got erased, and then we started again at the Younger Dryas. Well, and what? we've been even fucking convoluting it since then. Well, yeah, look yeah. at the Vikings in Scandinavia. They didn't. They didn't even think there was anything east or west. No, I mean, I, I mean apparently, though. right? Well, exactly. Well, the writings there is, mm-hmm. you know, they say there's. But they there's went all the way to Newfoundland. It, this is like eight hundred. Yeah, I know. This is eight hundred. That's what I'm saying. It's weird because that's a hell of a leap of faith. <laughs> you know, to just head out to fucking see. Well, they barely made it to to the UK. It took them a while to get to the UK. I mean, but what I'm saying is, thousands of years before that, not many, only a few, there was a land bridge from Denmark. Right. So, yeah. but uh, I think so, so. We don't know what they thought, even. I know. So, like, did they think there's nothing over there? Did they have their own? You know, like I, I just think that it's been cut off, and people have been passing the baton mm-hmm. that has become our fucking history. It's been passed to thousands of different cultures over the last hundred thousand years. But there could also, yeah, that's definitely true, especially if you have a, a group of people who have like a his, like an unbroken history, like the unbroken game of telephone, essentially. But there are also other possibilities. Like, again, what are humans? Humans are intrepid explorers. We have that in us, right? If you get a group of people like the, the intervisibility thing, they're going to island hop, right? They're going to go across those snowy mountains, right? They're going to find yeah. out. There's going to be some uh, group of guys who are going to do it. Um, <clears throat> what happens if those guys go discover something crazy and then on the way back they get wiped out by like a, a snowstorm? Like uh, all kinds of variables can happen, right? Especially in the ancient world where if you have a, an explorer and he's gone, who knows what happened, right? Like or, or a plague. So what Darren was talking about, I have a great example of stuff happening where it really happened one way and then it something terrible happens where most of the eyewitnesses, most of the people were wiped out by like smallpox or something. And then the history gets rewritten, right? By, by other people who come later. So one good story is um, we got to go back to the time of the conquistadors when the o- old world met the new world, right? So 1492, what happened? Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? So since that happened, we, uh, sa- the story of Mexico, Central America, South America, and, yeah, and North America, all the Americas, um, their world radically changed in a really short amount of time. So, um, in 1541, okay, you guys know the story of El Dorado, right? The, the city made yeah, in gold. City of gold. Yeah. So 1541 is only about 15 or, or 20 years after the first case, of, like before smallpox really started to wipe people out. So there was still, still traces of pre-Columbian, uh, society going on. Now that pre-Columbian society, there have been all kinds of rumors, right? They've been around, they, they're the stragglers from Atlantis, or they had their own civilization that was seeded from pe- uh, people with Denisovan DNA. Like, they all lived along the Amazon River. There are all kinds of narratives, right? Well, there is an actual, not just one eyewitness account, there are three detailed eyewitness accounts of th- those people existing, like this vast empire. So I'm, I'm going to start telling this story. It's a crazy story. It should be a, a movie. So, so when you say pre-Columbian... Pre-Columbian mean pre-1492, like the, the what was oh, going yeah, okay, on okay, before okay, the, yeah. the white people came, essentially, right? okay, before okay. Columbus came. Yeah. yeah. So pre-Columbian could be any time. It could be 2,000 years ago. It could be 5,000. That's just what it is, right? B- yep. Before the West uh, came over. So there's this guy named, he's a conquistador, conquistador named Francisco Oriana, 
And then there's this other guy named Gonzalo Pizarro. He's the brother of Francisco Pizarro, who took over Peru with his conquistadors. So these two guys wanted to go find... Um, they went to Ecuador and they wanted to find El Dorado. Because there are all these rumors rampant about, oh man, there's, there's so many resources here. There's so much gold. There's, there's palaces. There are people with all kinds of architecture that rivals that of Rome. Right? And we're talking about the Amazon, Amazonia. The area of Amazonia is basically the Amazon River that flows from, uh, from west to east. It empties into the Atlantic. Um, all, that, all the area around there, right? Just, which is now just dense rainforest and stuff like that. Well, um, so they go, they go from uh, Ecuador, and then they cross the Andes, this, this perilous mountain range, and then they get to the, this place called the Coca River. The Coca River is a tributary to the Amazon River, right? By the time they get there, they only have, they have 200 guys to start out. They're already running, they're depleted uh, uh, supplies. They're, a lot of guys are dying. And so what do they have to do? They have to pillage and, and jack these people living along the river, right? Well, they do that. They build a boat to do that. They send 50 guys, like a reconnaissance mission. So Pizarro and this priest named Carvajal. Carvajal is this guy who's basically jotting everything down. If you guys know anything about um, like this time period, priests were the only ones who were really literate. They could write. And they usually went on expeditions just to have a record, kind of like a black, like a black box that we have now. Like they just write everything down. Um, and plus, he's a man of God, so it's kind of, it's, it, you you have to take a story with a grain of salt. But it's interesting that what he <laughs> what he reports is insane. So they they go down the Amazon, and the the plan was to raid. Okay, we're just gonna raid a couple of villages, and we'll come back, and then we'll resume looking for the the city of gold. Well, they get caught downstream. They go like 250 miles down, and they're like, okay, we're we're screwed. We can't go back up. It's too strong. So the they <laughs> like just without even trying they were the first group of people to to fully navigate the am the length of the amazon which is cr which is super like longer than any other river ever right so so he reports th there are ten cities countless cities of 10,000 people or more they could muster a force of 50,000 soldiers with aged between 30 and 70 so not even young guys are in this they don't let young guys uh uh, participate in military, which is interesting, right? That's kind of like an interesting fact about like a, a society, right? Like they, they must have developed in some certain way to, to have that rule. Um, and then Carvajal goes on. They're sophisticated, well-organized. There are systems in place. They all spoke one language. So it wasn't just a bunch of different tribes that were speaking different variations of languages. It was all one language. And they had like, they had he knew they had a good economy because they, he could tell there are signs of a good economy, like well-maintained roads. They went on a road, right? So they, so they would basically size up these coastal cities and say, okay, there, there, there aren't that many guys. Let's just go in there and take their stuff. And they went in there one day, and this is all from Carvajal's account. They followed this road. It looked like a Roman road. That's what he said. It rivals that of Rome. They follow it. It's super wide, like a highway. And then they, they're only like, 50 guys, maybe like 40 guys, they get to a point and they go, okay, there's no way. At some point, we're going to meet resistance. They probably have thousands and thousands of people. We should probably head back. So they head back, and then they, they, they go on about their journey, and then they hear as they go through the, the river that it, there's, there's a guy. I forgot his name. It starts with an M. Uh, shit, I forgot his name. Uh, Montezuma? No, not Montezuma. Montezuma is Mexico. But anyway, he's like their chief guy. He's like the president or whatever it is. He's the guy who's running everything. And this is how he knew that they could muster that, uh, all these people. Now, just for comparison's sake, London at this time, contemporary with this, they had 60,000 people, population basically, inhabitants. That's the biggest city in Europe. On average, they had like eight, some like cities like Cologne and cities like in France and Spain, 8,000, 10,000 people. It took the city of Toledo in Spain to, until 1850 to get to 13,000 people just for that city. And Toledo is like a, a heart, like a, that's, a, that's a big city. There, that was just a drop in the bucket for these guys. So anyway, they, they get to, they, they finish their journey. Um, and then there are two other uh, guys. Uh, there's the Teixeira expedition and there's another expedition. I forget what the other one is, but they report the same thing. 
right? They, uh, they, they report that there's a ton of people, there's, there's gold everywhere. We've got to send reinforcements and, you know, uh, exploit this area. So, so that tells me that there is definitely something going on. Now, fast forward to the modern day. They've done LIDAR. You guys know what LIDAR is, right? Yeah. You, yeah. And they f what do they find? <laughs> Roads that are described by Carvajal, like grid systems, right? Places where people were deliberately planting and harvesting stuff on a large scale. And con conservative estimates, like just based on the square footage of what they're uh, growing, they, they say, man, the average city is like 10 to 15,000 people at this time. This flies in the face of everything that we've learned. Um, so what, how come people didn't take his diary? Because, again, this is 1541. It took 18 months to get through all this. What happened to his diary? How come he got suppressed? Or maybe it's a fraud. Well, it wasn't until 350 fucking years later that someone pulled it out of a library and was like, oh, wow look at this and they published it and it immediately got he got demonized and then he uh i forget the guy's name but he got demonized essentially and they they, they suppressed it so again that goes Can back it goes i'm sorry go ahead cancel culture canceled we yeah exactly how do you book it yeah and then it goes back to what darren's saying like there's always this force whoever it is it happened in this case it happened to be uh uh dog dogmatic archaeologists that and and priests Again, 1895, this is like, this is kind of like a golden age in archaeology where everybody is as simple as a king that doesn't want to admit that there's a kingdom bigger than his. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, get rid of that shit. But it, just because that guy exists and just because that guy hijacks the narrative kind of like a virus, it doesn't deny the truth of what was actually there 350 years earlier. There, it doesn't erase the fact that there were mega cities at this time. It doesn't erase the fact that they had these intricate road systems. And it definitely doesn't erase the fact that these guys had Denisovan DNA that didn't go through the, the uh, Bering Strait. They must have taken a boat across the, the Pacific. Now, that leads you into a whole other can of worms. Now we have, not only do we have these three eyewitness accounts that, that, that validate each other, we have genetic evidence now. We have cultural evidence because if you ask the tribes now, they speak, in their stories, it speaks of people coming by way of vessel a long time ago from a land that was on fire, right? And that uh, assumably, uh, some people say, oh, that's Tierra del Fuego, that's why it's called del Fuego. But really, it could also be Austra Australasia too because Australasia was hit by a comet at some point, right? And there, they had a mass extinction there too. So, I mean, there's all these like data points that if you try to connect the dots, um, you might not get a perfect picture, but there's something there, right? And that's what is important, that you notice that there's something that's worth looking further into there, right? Yeah. And what's even more interesting, I just thought about this like an hour ago, the, the whole Francisco Orion, or the, the conquistadors going to the new world, what what was their motivation it was greed it was like an it was like a virus of of your personality like you you're willing to kill all these people to there was like no moral filter there they just they just went in and and greed drove them to do all of this stuff and then what do we have today we the legacy of that based that type of thinking greed driven thinking um resource based uh um um uh, the, the mind mindset of scarcity that's been running the show for since then basically that's why we Some have government now it's just the propaganda of the day right yeah yeah and what's driving all that you know you, like if you get really deep into it maybe they all had maybe this group of people had something like toxoplasmosis that got them away from hey instead of living in harmony and and trying to like raise a family and worship god Let's just re control all the resources and make people do the work for us. That that I idea could have s started with like some sort of malfunctioning of your wiring as a human, right? Does that make sense? Like, yeah. It, yeah. Yep. So like now the question, Bruce thinks something stuff along those lines, and I thought this is interesting, was by design, right? Someone deliberately introduce that type whatever it is my uh, an ideological virus or a genetic virus or it could be archons i mean spiritual influence or yeah. negative entities i mean yeah you know i was thinking about when you mentioned that that book i was thinking about the other day about a book i wonder if you look at all the be like 
Attila Hunt and Hitler and all these people that actually went around to try and, and uh, like Alexander the Great. Genghis Khan. Do they all have, do they, I wonder if they all have written evidence or, or influences of spiritual entities or other others, mm-hmm. you know? It'd be interesting to know if, if they're somewhat possessed. Genghis Khan. Oh, that's who I meant. Not yeah. until then. Maybe two. Maybe in Probably two. both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, so we have this. So with that story of, of the Amazonia, right? We have this ghost population now, right? That we know for sure existed at some point because there are eyewitness accounts. And then there's this other unrelated um, article that I want to get to. Well, it's kind of related. Is the ghost population. Did you guys hear about this? This is very recently. They found a, basically they found an unknown archaic human existed. And they found out that it exists in be upwards of 19% of Western African genome. So in some people, they have 19% of this uh, previously unknown hominin uh, was, up, was mating with their, their people at some point. Another th- and then related to that is they found out that Neanderthal, because previously, I know you guys had Bruce on, the Neanderthal DNA was never found in Africans, right? Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA. Like, so Asian, Asian people and Caucasian people have upwards of 2%. Most, uh, some people, if you want to be conservative, say 1% Neanderthal DNA, and Africans didn't have any. Now they found out, oh, they have 0.3% DNA, uh, Neanderthal DNA. That's, that should be like front page headlines of like archaeology magazine and all that stuff because for the longest time people have built their theories on out of africa solely because the Af- the the west africans specifically didn't have neanderthal dna but guess what now they did so okay that what it's happened it's more diluted yeah yeah, it's just more diluted. So th- what does that mean? That means it's further source. back. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so this is the hidden history I'm talking about. Like, I, it's, it seems like, I don't think that this is new. I think maybe at some point, like if you think about Alex, uh, the Library of Alexandria, the Library of Ashurbanipal, like the Babylonian, uh, they might have had this type of information at the ready and then it got burned down, right? Arson, right? Um, that should tell you something. There probably was some sort of force there, some sort of agenda going on to get rid of that information. What if they knew that? What if they knew the patterns of, of history? What if they knew about Neanderthals who came in? Except they didn't call them Neanderthals, obviously. Maybe they just called them, you know, what the Romans would call them, like a germ, right? A different type of people. Except the difference is they can mate with us. We all share this chromosome, chromosome two, which is what Bruce calls it, and that basically allows us to interbreed and have viable offspring, right? Even though this person's a Neanderthal, even though this person's a Denny Sovan, even a hobbit person, a hobbit person from Flores could have a baby with, with a human, like a homo. I was just going to ask about the hobbits and the giants. Like, you know, there's evident, the hobbits for sure are accepted, but I don't know about the giants. I don't know about giants either. Yeah. I'm not sure about giants, except that's, that's the hidden, the hidden part. You know what? I wonder if it, does it have to be like, uh, Giants? What do you mean? Well, it's because I was talking to Tasha, and she's like, you go see a lion in Africa, and it's like twice as big as a fucking lion in the zoo. And uh, same with all these animals we bring in captivity. They're like stunt. And I would argue that all of humankind is in some level of captivity right now. We've built our, our own zoo and put ourselves in it. It's not like a zoo. Kind of it is. I don't know what it is. But it's like we're docile. We're, hmm. we're highly domesticated. So yeah. if you like released a bunch of us into the fucking wild, and I mean like straight up wild, like, I, you know, we say we've got some untouched tribes. I don't know how untouched they are. But, you know, if you just had like a couple of fucking couple hundred people just roaming the Canadian fucking wilderness for 500 years or a couple thousand years, what would they... You know, would they start? Would you, would you start to get a foot, foot and a half taller, or you know, would you start to get more feral, more wild, more Sasquatchy? Maybe Sasquatch is just a, a couple of feral humans left out there, and we all look like that. That that point, Darren, that's a very interesting point because you can see that in other things. So here's a great example. Um, I, I don't know which part of China, but then the women there would would practice foot binding, 
right? Do you guys know what that is? They would intentionally yep. Yep. bind their feet so their feet would little be tiny, small. Little tiny things, yeah. yeah, I have to think that domestication is something like that, except it's inv- it's more of like a mindset situation, right? Because how do you tame a wild horse? You have to get it into a certain mindset, right? Same thing with foxes. Foxes, they change color once they become domesticated. There's a there's a physical response that that is begot from uh, an ethereal change, right? Like ethereal meaning something that's not directly apparent, right? So in this case, it would be like their mindset, right? So I would have to think that government, modern life is some sort of mind binding, some sort of ethereal binding that, that a population has. And that's why, again, it becomes more and more compelling. Like, well, I can't, I really can't rationalize how that would happen just randomly. It must, we must, ha- cause you, a, a, a pig doesn't domesticate itself. It, something else has to influence it in order for it to go down that direction, right? Um, another interesting thing about domestication is it's reversible too. So you can get a domesticated pig, send it out into the wild, it'll grow, its skin will thicken, its, cha- its color will change, and it'll grow hair, it'll grow tusks. So Yeah, like, that's a real good example is actually yeah. looking at a pig. Taking a domestic pig to a wild pig because you yeah. do not want to fuck with like a wild instantly, pig. Instantly, it changes. Not like instantly. That. What is this? in Dungeons and Dragons. No, no, <laughs> no, like that. No. Goes into the bush, just poof. How many, how many generations does it take? No, it takes like a couple of years. Is it that same pig though, or a different generation? Same pig. Same pig. Same pig. Oh, that's that's what I meant by instantly. And you're, oh, that's what, well. There's a big difference between the same pig in a couple of years and instantly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you're probably part pig, so take that into account. I mean, that's a. That's it looks point. like we're mostly pig and monkey. Whether that's from crossbreeding or I mean, it was. I think it was Bruce who we talked to. Was it Bruce? No, somebody. Someone else. Someone else we talked to about. You know, monkey probably fucked the pig. Here we are. I mean, they <laughs> practice tattooing on pigs. They practice operating on pigs. Pigs are the closest thing to us from a fucking like skin standpoint, but we got ninety nine percent monkey. I mean, it's like, and then we got Jewish people and Arab people who don't eat pork. Is that right. because it's dirty, or is that because it used to be that's like you're eating your um, ancient fucking self? Well, apparently, it takes longer to digest pork than anything. Because humans don't like digesting human. Is there is there genetic evidence of that, or is I thought the whoever we had on talking to that, like, had yeah. some evidence of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know much. I, about I'd have that. to look look back into it, but I mean, the pig thing keeps coming up, right? I mean, I've I've been hearing the pig thing. The funny thing is, when you used to hear the pig thing back in the day, it oh, seemed yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, and it's like the more questions and research you do, it's like, well, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. There's something to do with like the heart too. I think the pig heart's like very similar to a human heart. It's fucked up. Yeah. Th- yeah. They, they, they've done like organ transplants, right? Where like a human body would take a, a pig organ. Not all of them, but like, I think I've heard that somewhere. I don't know. That could be fake news too. I haven't really looked too We're far. Probably that. fucking eight pig hybrids. So get used to it. <laughs> well, didn't South Park talk about this? Man bear pig. Remember man yeah. bear pig? Well, you yeah. remember like I think Seinfeld even had the pig man. Remember right? Kramer really? helped him escape. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh man, that's interesting. Um, what were we talking about before that? Oh, we we're talking about like domestication and stuff. Yeah. Um, Gra- uh, Graham, I actually want to address your. Uh, I know you wanted to ask me about Doggerland and like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, I got it here. I got it here. It was uh, Eugene McCarthy. Grimerica talks hybridization, stabilization, and macroevolution with Eugene McCarthy, PhD. What, what episode wow. is that? 232. Wow. Do you think there's like a link well, between... Uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, oh, just it's uh, Eugene McCarthy joined us to chat about his many years of research into hybridization, stabilization. So his theory was that it's hybridization and stabilization has more to do with where we're at than evolution. Evolution. Yeah. Wow. Um, we talk about the differences between this and Darwinism, like the accumulation of mutations versus genetic process. We get right into hybridization, even possibilities of where humans may have come from, i.e. pigs and monkeys. And there are many, many more examples of how true hybridization works. 
And of course, we ask about Darren's Wolfen and the Liger. Oh, that's where the Wolfen came out. That's where the Wolfen first came out, and I still think I'm right about the Wolfen. Dolphins came from fucking wolves, man. One way or the other. That worked one way or the other. Because a, a dolphin is a mammal, I would argue that it worked the other way. What about sea lions and like seals? Is that Are they like the, the missing link between the dolphin and the dog and the wolf? Well, uh, there could be. Maybe there's... I would, there could See, be like missing he, he would say that that's all. Animals. He would say that's all hybridization. Right? Oh, right, right, right. It's not like genetic. You're not evolving from the water to the land. It's mm-hmm. like you're mixing it and. Well, I think he actually, said both. Like no, he was well, okay with both. The Long-term minor evolution. traits, minor traits. I think you know, but not not like big. But major switches like, were hybridization. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you look at the skeleton of a dolphin, man. It's got fucking hind legs. Telling you, telling you. That's, that's People send me wolf and stuff all the time. I have a building fucking binder of wolf and evidence to unleash on you one day. Well, you got to wonder because there's there's only, I think there's only a couple of mammals in the, couple of mammals in the ocean, right? Whales and dolphins. Whales, dolphins, manatees, I think. Sea lions. Uh, those are all manatees are just different type of dolphin though, really, pretty much. Like, so I guess sea lions are like the actual. So sea lions, I mean, by by my idea, I would say that you know, in a fucking million years from now, sea lions will be fully aquatic. They're almost there now. So the sea lions are where the wolves were a million years ago. The wolf fins. Sorry. Interesting. Interesting. And then maybe there are more, but they got wiped out somehow, right? It could be because I mean. Race is probably an evolutionary thing too, right? I mean, honestly, I don't know if you're allowed to say that, but it would seem like the same humans go to different parts of the world and you spend a bunch of time there, you start to look different in different ways. So I don't think you always need to have like... See, I don't know. You, I don't know if like I agree with that was because it, 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 there wasn't enough time for us to do that. I don't think there was enough time for humans to evolve into different races. It doesn't seem applicable. Even if it was 800,000 years ago when... 800,000 years ago would do it for sure. No, I think it's I enough think it's, time for sure. I don't think it could make 100%. I don't think it can make a new species, but there's divergence. I mean, there I mean 300,000 years or 350,000 years who are, depending on who you ask, we diverged with Neanderthals, but yet we could still mate with them. So is that really evolution or is that more adaptation depending on that's like, what, So that yeah. so I guess that's what I would say is is that probably race is more adaptation than evolution but i mean yeah. adaptation is really just a fucking a micro of evolution being a macro then it's just like one sliver of the ruler so it's like when you get 30 slivers then it's evolution but mm-hmm. one sliver is only mm-hmm. adaptation i mean we see we can see that now we can see that in real time that if you cram different things in different corners they act fucking differently and uh, slowly start to adapt to the surrounding humans are super super adaptable so i don't think you need you, so it's like you don't need to have things on the way to each other. You can have different versions of the thing because it's gone to different places. Do you think it would ever get to a point? Like, look though? at dogs. Look at dogs are a perfect fucking example. Look what we can do with dogs just through adapting them through selective breeding and this and that and the other. And I think that kind of naturally takes effect over long terms of time. Like you go to you go to um, Australia and you're stuck in the sun all day or Africa and it's fucking hot as fuck so you develop eventually you adapt to such a system that your body doesn't let in as much of the fucking sunlight it doesn't like I forget what the what's the uh, pigment? the pigment or whatever that you know there's something to that because black people can go walk around Africa all day and be okay oh, melanin, and if my yeah. red headed buddy Dustin goes to Africa for like 20 minutes he's fucked yeah he'll be pink <laughs> Like, all like he honestly, yeah, this dude can't do sun. He, yeah. j- he just can't do it. So there's something to that, right? There's, they can deal with the temperature better than us. But if he mated with your friend, the black eyed sister, then that would be okay, right? They could have children, right? Well, that's probably, what, yeah, exactly. At what point does that go away? At what point does the chromosome change where you can't have viable offspring? Right. I, I don't know. That's the magic well, question, know. right? Experiment will get you fucking all sorts of different stuff. <laughs> <and we'll> <laughs> 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 That would be the number one video on like Pornhub. 
Pornhub. <laughs> what is it? What's Justin up to this week? <laughs> What's <the> Bible? Because <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You know, it's it's this weird thing that all those things. I mean, I'm not okay. I'm not saying I want to fuck pigs, but nobody's getting away with fucking a pig in 2020. You know what I mean? We've said the society set up such a way that that seems crazy. Is that because the pig might get pregnant and everyone will freak the fuck out? Or is it because fucking pigs is weird? I, I, I think it's probably a little both. Didn't someone say, like, in the 80s that AIDS came from someone fucked a monkey? Like, do you think that really happened? Or do you think there are people out there doing that? Like, no, I don't think so. I don't, oh, think so. I mean, I don't know. I don't There's 7 so. billion motherfuckers running around out there. Who knows what some of these people are up to, honestly. I think it's quite possible. Well, yeah, there could, I be, know there could dude, be bestiality I know fetishes and stuff. I mean, people are dressing shit. up in fur and pretending to do it. So, well, there are all the, there are all these rumors of CRISPR, like stuff, especially in China, like they're gen- they're fucking with the genetics and making human animal human hybrids. If people are doing, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're doing that. I don't think that's that's like a rumor. I think that's got to be true. I, I think there are like leaked files. I haven't looked too much into it, but I, I'm pretty sure that that's going on. So, if that's going on now. Who's to say that didn't happen like in the remote past, right? That could also happen too. Uh, obviously, there's no evidence for this. I, that's why I don't really talk about it, but I do read up on it. And I am aware that if history tends to repeat itself, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. Is that like a sign of intelligence? Like once something gets so intelligent that it starts to manipulate its environment and maybe and manipulate its genetics or other things' genetics? I mean, if people are willing to subjugate a whole gr- an ethnic group and enslave them, that's a form of that, essentially, right? They're they're changing, they're manipulating their life, essentially. What's the the all the variables as they can? They want to control so they can have a certain outcome. Maybe at at some level, once you have enough resources, you start to just fuck with people's genetics, and maybe that's why we can't find missing links to anything. Maybe uh, that's why people think. Uh, a walrus is always a walrus because God or whatever gen- en- genetic engineer made it that way, and then it just stuck. Anyway, I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> no, I like that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, All right, let's hit let's hit Doggerland before we before, before we wrap up. Time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh yeah, because yeah. you got this beautiful slide up here that shows us like the current state of the British Isles and the mainland Europe, and then. Like 16,000, 8,000, 7,000 years ago. Do you want, what me to it was sh- like? uh, want me to screen share with you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. If, you, if you could, yeah. Okay. Let me, um... <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Do you guys, do you guys see it? Uh, not yet. I think it's coming in right now. Do you guys see, you guys should see it. It's on my screen. You can see like the Isle of Man and the. No, nope, no. Nope. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, the, oh, I, oh, I like that one. Yeah. That's okay. Cool. 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 Um, let me zoom in. Oh no, I guess that's fine. Okay, so hopefully the the viewers can see this. Yeah. Um. So. Oh, Justin. <laughs> so this is Doggerland here, right? Um. That you can kind of see the North Sea and and um everything separated now, right? This is more of what the boundaries look like today um so the netherlands here there is this city called monster netherlands that's what it's called um they might pronounce it differently but i just call it monster because it's spelled like monster and they have this contraption or what you will it's called the zand motor which translates to sand engine right so what it does is because the netherlands are it's trying to stave off um flooding like it's trying to keep its real estate essentially because every year it's, it keeps sinking lower and lower into the north sea so what what the zan motor is designed to do is it's designed to dredge up the the ocean bottom and add it to keep adding it to the beach so they so they can b- essentially rebuild their beach otherwise it would just all sink into the water so because of that they've been dredging up this soil or whatever you, the sand that dates to the stone age right and first okay remind remind people what, when the stone age was so stone age is basically it can it's basically the entire pleistocene essentially so the pleistocene starts like two and a half million years ago up until the younger dryas uh 
time. So they've dredged up core samples that date back like 800,000 years that where they found human activity in this oh, area. Oh, I thought it was more recent. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, wow. no. It, there is recent stuff too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they've dredged up cemeteries. So along the beach, there, there are entire cemeteries of these extinct villages washing up on the shore. And then so now what's going on, because there's so much stuff, is they're, they're, first these scientists were trying to gather ev- like all the artifacts themselves. They, they just didn't have enough people. So they opened it up to the public so now you have all these beachcombers looking through, finding like, like one. There was an, the article that I did uh, uh, followed the story of one of these beachcombers, and in one day, she's kind of an elderly lady too, so she's not even like peak physical condition. She found like five hundred things in one day, five hundred artifacts, one of which was a Neanderthal tool that goes back fifty thousand years ago. So <laughs> they have like these. This is a really interesting instance because you have the public do, uh, have this direct pipeline to the scientists in terms of evidence and what they find. And so they just, whatever they find, they submit it to the lab and then they, 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 you know, they document it. They, they put paperwork associated with everything they're finding. And you can imagine that that requires a lot of resources, a lot of manpower, a lot of hours. So, so they take right now, a, I think the majority of people are just on a volunteer basis. They're not really paying anybody, only like the really, you know, the people with the PhDs and all that stuff. But now they're they're thinking about, in light of all this, they're thinking about taking something like the Zan motor and applying it to like Beringia and like South America and and even uh, places in the Car- uh, Caribbean. All these all these underwater uh, places where they suspect that there was some sort of civilization when the sea level was lower. Now that yeah, like 300, 400 feet lower. Well, you know what's funny is that there's that crazy island like way yeah, off the it's way. Azores? No, it's, it's the one that's like... Off of Portugal? Or? No, it's west of the UK. West of Ireland specifically. It's like yeah, west that, of Ireland. Easier, there's yeah. a tiny little island there. It's just got like a little hut where monks used to go back in the day. And it's like, you look at this fucking island and it's like, do you really think someone sailed out there to build this hut? They must have walked there at some point. Anyway, yeah. am I looking at so all yeah. that, all the like? Well, I don't even know what color Where, where's that is. Br- where's Bringia again? All that like flesh-colored stuff. Uh huh. Oh, you mean this used to be land? Yeah. yeah. These were lowlands. So basically, how ev- long ago? So no, as recently as five thousand five hundred, six thousand five hundred years ago. So basically, how is that possible? Because it was a gradual thing. So all of so the Netherlands are basically marshlands, right? So how do you get a marsh? Well, uh, once upon a time, the marsh Holy was shit. was a rich lowland, right? So it, these were rich lowlands with with it was totally ideal for hunting, hunting and gathering, growing crops, having fresh water, all of these things that you need. It's even better than than uh, the UK now, like in terms of like. If you if you had a group of hunters, right, and you guys, I don't know, threw dice to see who got first dibs on the land, you would pick Doggerland first because it just has everything you need in a, in a society. It's no reason. I mean, it's not a coincidence that they, that these guys were fishing up. I told you guys last time that these fishermen, two hundred years ago, they were reporting it that they were finding weapons, they were finding pots, they were finding tools, they're finding all of these things. Like, wow, there's just so much activity. Well, when they did the core sample, they found out that not only was it just Homo sapiens that were coming and going, Neanderthals came in and and were uh, taking advantage of the land. And before them, 800,000 years ago, was was an archaic human called uh, Homo antecessor. They were doing the same thing 800,000 years ago. And they they know this because of the core sample, because of geology. So geology... I, I know you guys have heard of um, the, the Greenland ice cores. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that essentially proved the Younger Dryas. Well, this is very similar. And the, here's another interesting thing about the North Sea. The North Sea is one of the coldest seas in the world. It's really, it's, and that makes sense, right? Because it used to be a glacier, a giant ice sheet at one point, right? So because of that, it's preserving all of this organic material that would normally be eaten up by organisms and bacteria and, and all of these different uh, forces that deteriorate all the stuff. But since it's like ice, ice cold, 
Um, <clears throat> it's just basically, it just needs to be defrosted, essentially. So this is inspired, um, I mentioned earlier, the, the, the European Frontier or Ancient Frontier uh, Project, Aquaterra oh, yeah, Project. I to ask you what the name of that How was. How deep is exactly. that water now, then? Ancient Frontier Project. Oh man, I, I don't. The English Channel. I think it's about like th at its at its deepest. I don't know the exact number. I would guess like three hundred or four hundred feet. Not that much. Maybe less than that. You All know. right, I got the English. So that channel. flood, though, like in your other graphic, you have seventy-four meters. Yeah, that's about exactly five hundred feet, probably. That's a lot of water, though, from 5,000 years ago. Where'd that shit come from? Well, I mean, look at the ice age after yeah. the Younger Dry I guess it's still, we're so always so. dumping water in, right? So, we're always no, dumping not, water in. Not always. I mean, so, so if you got time bow, on the earth without, without ice, right? But the bow hasn't stopped running. I don't know if you guys can see this. 10,000 years. Do you guys see the light yeah, blue yeah. dotted line here? Yeah. Yeah. That was the, the at the LGM, the last glacial maximum. That is what, this was where the giant block of ice was. So you can the see. Last Great, but you got to just say how long ago the last glacier oh, that was, was like 20,000, 20,000, like 20,000 years ago. Yeah. So like okay. 18,000 BC around there. So 20,000 years ago, that, that whole glacier was there. Yeah. This whole thing and was there. The, and then the flood that you talked about from Scandinavia. Oh, so that could all be slowly receding because it was all pushed up from the way to that glacier. So that land's probably sinking too. Yeah, and I, you guys had Grant, uh, uh, Randall on, and Randall has this thing called aso, uh, isostatic depression. Um, yeah, so yeah. Just, that's going that's back down because the glacier is gone. Yes. So now it's kind of like doing this long, like it's kind of bouncing up and down a little bit, like at a geological level, because it's still because it just had like in in in, the, in terms of geological timescale. Just an instant ago, it had this giant heavy block of ice on it, you know, so it's still reeling from that. And the Netherlands is a perfect, it's a perfect uh, uh, example of the, of the effects to this day, because the Netherlands probably will, if it wasn't for the Zan motor, it would be diminishing year by year. Well, it is. They're just like artificially <laughs> augmenting it. Yeah, exactly. With the bones of the past, literally. So, so what happened with that that other Sturega landslide or whatever that was more like how many thousands of years ago would that be like le after the younger Dryas, there was something in Scandinavia that that helped this flood as well right so there was a tsunami that came from the direction of Norway so it's kind of <laughs> and that was because there was a um a basically huge block of ice just melted and it just wash it just emptied into the north sea because it was at by that point it was already filling up there was very little le of the landmass left and they had um <clears throat> this if you guys can see in the middle you can see dogger bank yep <clears throat> excuse me so there was an island here essentially this little thing and that was it's kind of like if you look at easter island now you can kind of see that, wow, if you, if you drain the ocean a little bit, there's like way more to this landmass. Well, that's what Dogger Bank is. It's like the remnants of Dogger Land. So you can, the reason why this is so compelling is because you can see it in all over the world. If it, I recommend anybody listening now. I know Google Earth does like, um, they, a lot of people have problems with Google Earth, but there are some telltale signs if you just look at it from a bird's eye view, a satellite view. You can see like this effect uh, just in the shallow water around islands now. It's very, very interesting stuff. So that's why I mentioned, um, I think, Graham, you asked where Beringia is. Beringia, yeah, yeah. Beringia is where Alaska and Siberia connected. So, oh right, okay, the Bering Strait there. Yeah, <clears throat> they want to they want to put something like the Zan motor there just to put all that speculation to rest, which I think is a great idea, and I think people uh, unanimously would want that to happen. The only people who don't want that to happen, take a guess, just the people who built their theories on the Beringia hypothesis and and people the Clovis first hypothesis and all that stuff. Yeah, but you can't suppress stuff like technology. <clears throat> and irrefutable uh, rev uh, evidence and stuff like that because it's just there are there eventually the truth comes out the truth nowadays comes alive. especially with nowadays them. especially yeah they can't just murder everybody who's <laughs> who's like involved in this because the public's involved now 
Like you could take you could take your your son or daughter to to Monster Amsterdam or Monster uh, Netherlands and uh, f- take home a Neanderthal bone, <laughs> right? <laughs> you could do that. Um, that that's possible now. So I. So I, is there, do you think is that UK tsunami still sinking? No, what? no, nothing's sinking really. Netherlands well, is could be. Well, Netherlands the UK, is sinking. all that whole area could still be fucking sinking. Well, no, 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 no. It doesn't sink. So the yeah, UK it does sink from the because the isostatic depression is gone. But these these are elevated plateaus and elevated highlands, so it's gonna take like another flood for them to really sink like a substantial okay. amount. But, so was that was that uh, that tsunami? Do you think that was the biblical flood, or is that something to do with it? Like, was it I, big I, enough to be? Was it big enough to affect the Mediterranean all that down at that point? I think Probably it, not, right? When was the tsunami? Because you know what? I forget Randall or someone talks about we had someone on the show that was showing us some like it was somewhere in the Caribbean or you know where it was? It was on the on the east coast of Africa that there's like giant drumlins from an impact in the oh, in, yeah. Indian Ocean yeah, like yeah, five thousand years ago. Well that this was fifty five hundred BC, I think, right? So seven thousand BC there. or fifty five hundred years ago. No, 5,500 BC, so like 7,000 years ago is when everything started to go south. Um, I think the, the, the tsunami was probably the result of multiple, either like multi- multiple destabilizations of the, of the remnants of the ice sheet there. Because by that point, most of the ice sheet was, because there's the Younger Dryas event that took out a large chunk of it. And remember, it was already, before the Younger Dryas impact event, it was warming. So it was already um, <clears throat> melting before it actually got completely destabilized and then it probably got super warm like super warm super fast yeah and you can see that in the ice cores because of that that spike you can see it like it's literally you can see the graph all the water vapor it got super humid in this motherfucker so are they finding any ooh parts in in that uh yeah in that sand stuff any what's an ooh part out of place artifact oh Mm-hmm. Um, oh, something like the Antikythera device, like something like that. Well, maybe not that stri- significant, but you know, maybe gems or crystals or stuff that's you know, like going, you know, that shows some machining capability from way back when, or just some weird out of place thing that. I, I guess know. I don't know about. I that. guess they're date when they date them. I guess they f- when they figure out what they are and then they date them afterwards, right? Like how do they tell the difference between the, you know, some skulls from. 7,000 years ago compared to like hundred, uh, hundreds or tens of thousands. Well, some of the skulls that they, like the cemeteries I mentioned earlier, they sequence like five individuals' DNA already. They sequence it. So, wow. Yeah, so they, um, they, they, they find information that way. They'll use the geological, uh, the, the, the core samples, the sediment samples again, and use that as a scale and compare it to the artifacts that are washing up on the beach and like which sediment that came from. Because again, with the Zan motor, you can track the levels because you the person operate well i don't think a person's operating it i think it's just automated at this point but they can see they can go back in the records and say okay they it, it excavated this part at this time so they could go back and track like where the where which part of the strata it came from and then just go from there and again the, some of the oldest remnants that that they found were again this homo antecessor and again that magic number 800,000 or so years ago they were living here. So, so what was going on 800,000 years ago? Like, it seems like there was this worldwide thing happening similar to the younger Dryas, like at the younger Dryas, it seems like it was a worldwide thing that could be, you know, the legacy of that could be a bunch of different stories. Like, like uh, Atlantis is a big one or the biblical flood, flood, right? And then now that we've examined that, now we know that it wasn't just one giant flood, although there was one giant flood, but a series of floods and a series of impact events and a series of famines that came after that. And then not only that, there were a series of, of volcanic explosions, right? Dark like, ages. Yeah. 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 And so uh, that's why I, I think it'll be someone in the, in the future is going to be able to look at all this and find some sort of pattern of some sort of cataclysmic pattern, right? I know Randall talks about like the the not just the the um the the clock of the of the of the of the earth, but like this cosmological time scale, right? And it seems like all of the like Mount Toba and all of these cataclysms seem to happen at certain times when we're in a certain position in the universe, 
right? <laughs> it's like every yeah. 13,000 years, as near as I can tell. Yeah, and when I first heard that, I'm like, no way. That just seems like someone's trying to force a, a, a circular peg into a square like hole. But the it more I looked into it. twice per procession. Yeah. So are we due? I don't know. Some There are some people who make a living off of like scaring people with that. I don't know, but I know for certain that at some point, so, something like that's going to happen again. It's not like we're suddenly safe, right? Well, if you use the Younger Dryas as the last one, then we're right up on it. Yeah, yeah, we're coming up on it, right? So who knows? Maybe that. Maybe it's not going to be a, a common impact. Maybe it'll be something more invisible. Maybe it'll be like something like this coronavirus. Maybe it'll come in the form of like a dictator, or it might come in the form of like a technology, like a black swan event, right? I know there was some guy I was talking to the other day, and this is completely unrelated, but he was talking to me about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and how how that started from some shadow. No one knows who started it, and he just threw that out there. And now people are making fucking millions and millions of dollars off of just this this technology that most people know nothing about you know so like maybe that's the black swan who knows you know maybe it's something that we just can't see coming ever and you know i don't know where where i don't know where to go from there i just know that that's where i am now with yeah, all yeah. this information yeah yeah well what about the dna sequencing that was done on the five people uh, they in have that area like is there anything interesting out of that they haven't released the results yet they've sequenced oh. them though so that's coming soon so you got to stay posted on this because this is again this all just happened within the last like i know the zan motor was introduced in 2011 but they weren't really finding stuff on this scale until pretty recently so um that's going to be something in the coming months that i would like be glued to is what what did they find from this from uh this gene sequencing well, I heard a rumor that the the coronavirus only affects like a certain sect of Asian men. Yeah, I heard about that. The ACE2 or something like that. That sure seems like another fucking bioweapon escaped. Yeah, bio. There you go. That's another technology. Who invented bioweapons? Like, what? Where? Like, when did that start? When did people start start being able to well, manipulate people matter? Are fucking idiots. I mean, well, really, you guys? You can, does it seem like a good idea to make a bioweapon? I mean, it's not hard to fucking. <laughs> It's not hard for me to like, pro even with my simple faculties, mm -hmm. it's not hard for me to project out where bioweapons end up. Zombie apocalypse. It's, it's mean, just like, know. it's a fucking given. All roads lead to zombie apocalypse. Some roads take longer to get there, but that's where they all end up. Yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe it makes sense to somebody under the influence of some sort of parasite again. It goes back the to spice. genetics, right? They're on the spice. They're they're on the the Mexican loco weed. That's what they are, right? Aren't I don't high? go bad about the weed. All right. <laughs> it's the spice, the melange. But yeah, and then like, and then we can then this leads to all other kinds of subjects, right? Like psychedelics is an obvious subject that you can kind of segue from here, and you start to think about okay, why does something like a mushroom exist? Why do psychedelic experiences exist? Why, do, like, ter if you guys have read Terence McKenna, um. He talks about novelty being generated, or you, you could, humans are able to tap into novelty once they take high doses of psychedelics. What's novelty? Who's in charge of that? Is, that, is novelty kind of like a natural resource we find, like when you mine for gold? Maybe you mine the, your, the inner, your inner brain for novelty, you know what I mean? For ideas? Are ideas something that could be cultivated in mind? Like the list goes on and on, right? And these could, all these things I mentioned could be encoded in some sort of scripture somewhere, right? There, it, no one really knows because either there's a lack of information or it's being suppressed. And again, it all goes back to being this hijacking, just like a virus, right? Just like a virus hijacks a person. Um, there could be someone who just had a leg up on everybody else. They just got some sort of ideological upgrade, if you want to call it. And they just r ran with it. You know, they started to infect others and bend them to their will. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm rambling, guys. I don't know. This is like really, really no, no, deep no, no, no. stuff. <laughs> this, is, this, this is great. Yeah. This is a good one. Yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even get to talk to, about the Australian fires. Like they've uncovered, like the, the the brush fires were burnt. I mean, the brush was burnt away and they found more ancient stuff that predates the pyramids. I didn't even get to talk about that. Maybe that'll be the next episode. Is that, well, do that shit's a, do fucked because it's that, in the way of the high-speed rail, so they're just going to be dynamiting that shit. <laughs> I, I saw that, yeah. 
<laughs> I saw that map <laughs> in California. So what do you mean by they were burning away the bushes? Oh, so so um, if you in Southwest in Southwest Vic Victoria, fires. yeah, in Southwest Victoria, there's this uh, culture called the Gundit Mara culture, and and they they inhabited this place called Boond Bidge or Bidge Bo Budge Bim Budge Bim, I, I yeah Budge Bim, and they have like a national park and everything. And the fires burnt away a lot of the brush at the national park. And one thing that this culture was known for was their aquaculture. So they were basically what that means is they had stone channels that they built that were kind of like traps where they can trap eels and eat them. It was like a, a huge, a huge uh, stone complex. Well, before the fires, it was just like this one little like aspect of it. And then the fires burnt away and they found like 20 like acres or something more of the same thing and then they dated it it it's from 5500 bc wow or 6500 bc one of those i'm conflating the numbers but yeah around there and again like that pre the pyramids are 4000 something bc or something like that so well, it predates they, they the pyramids. mainstream the mainstream mainstream, mainstream. right yeah. right yeah. right but but still like that's an that's an incredible if you told the the average person hey they found that did you hear the australian fires uh uh, revealed this ancient complex that that's older than the pyramids. That would blow people's minds, like the average person uh, mind. And who knows how that much older it is. is than that is not fucking newsworthy, Justin. That <laughs> is not newsworthy. Didn't you hear what fucking Donald Trump said this morning? What do you say? Let's let's get that dredger. I'm just saying. Let's get that dredger. Let's get that dredger out. In Whatever Donald Australia Trump and, tweeters yeah. tweets. That's the news. That would be interesting. Get it out in the in Asia and the Philippines and all that. Indonesia and Australia. Get the dredger out there. I got. I think that that was all something, you know, because that would all been connected too, right from Australia, right up into what's there, Hong Kong or whatever the fuck. Oh, like Indonesia. All through the Philippines, Indonesia, yeah. all those islands. That was probably all fucking lined up. And that's all of, that's of where the Hobbit people world. were. Okay. The Hobbit people yeah. were living there, yeah. And they yeah. were living there yeah. as recently as 10,000 years ago. So, Holy <laughs> shit, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that, to me, it seems like those are the survivors that are fucking running like a motherfucker to high ground as their, as their way of life is slowly disappearing because the water's coming and coming and coming and coming. Yeah. And it's crazy to think about all the legends that surround that. Like if you, if like Bruce talks about all the local legends in Australia, like he's, he lives in Australia and he has like, he has direct connections to all the chieftains there and stuff. So they tell him the stories and their origin stories are now being corroborated by science. It's really interesting stuff. And I think people who are new to this subject should definitely look into Australia first. And that's not to mention like other anomalies that are seemingly unrelated, like the Great Barrier Reef. What the hell is the Great Barrier Reef all about? How come there are no other Great Barrier Reefs? Why is it only there? Or like the, the Amazon rainforest. How come there are all these like such diverse biodiversity there? It seems like there used to be a, a metropolis there that had a, like a giant greenhouse that some sophisticated society was cultivating all these different plants. And then some, and then all the people die and then all and we have this overgrown. Yeah. Holy shit, eh? Yeah. And like what, maybe the great barrier reef was something like that. At, and then it just went underwater. That's the difference. So like there's well, all these so you're comparing marks. the Amazon rainforest to my unkept backyard. <laughs> Yeah, you get to take out the mower for you weeks on out. end, and it's fucking growing. There's just thriving <laughs> civilizations of different kinds of bugs, and then I pull out the mower. Yeah, you got to pull out the mower. You got to. Did you hear, did you hear what happened with the Great Barrier Reef and that uh, that scientist that was suing the? Uh, I thought it was all dying the Great Barrier Reef. That's oh, an I'm, I'm not going to be able. To, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, but the, they were, they sued like this guy got fired and kicked out because he was saying. Oh yeah, and he won. He ended up winning on all eight counts. Yeah, they wow. fucking through basically said you, they're a hundred percent wrong on all eight, and this guy there had to crowdfund his his. You know, this is the this is part of the suppression. I feel like you know, I mean, it's all backwards. Yeah, he I, was proving scientifically that it was that the Great Barrier Reef was fine or whatever, and yeah. there was a little they had misconstrued the ninety three percent thing, which was really ninety three percent of one percent of something was uh, acidic, and it, oh, it's just. It's unfortunate that, yeah. that information is getting weaponized like that to push yeah. agendas, yeah. especially with climate science. Like, 
Yeah. Uh, Randall talks a lot about that. I always bring up Randall, but he really is one of the only truth tellers left and he, he backs it up with hard science. And c p people, I think everybody should know now that CO2 emissions have nothing to do with w warming. It actually makes things colder because plants eat CO2. You know, I mean, that's a, again, another episode, but yeah, it just sucks that, that people are taking advantage of a lack of information such as the Great Barrier Reef and then they're just using it like to make up these fake news narratives yeah, and yeah. to push their agenda. And it's like, man, you're doing such a disservice yeah, to, to yeah. humanity. And it sounds overblown, but it's not. That really is when you logically follow the after effects of, of, of mis of deliberately misconstruing the facts and, and, and beguiling people, then you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll get like, all the, f yeah, all the fear and the policies. I mean, they're, they're trying to, it's not like they're just saying, the earth is flat or something like that. I mean, this is like you're changing policies. You know, yeah. you're, you're, you're scaring the hell out of people. Totally. Yeah. You're affecting people. You're affecting everybody's daily life by pushing that. Fear is the mind killer. Yeah. Shuts the brain down. Well, Justin, we're just about out of time, but I think, you know, as usual, 90 minutes has flown by. An hour and wow. a half evaporates wow. into thin air. We're getting some people in the chat saying that we should do a three-way with the Snake Bros. Yeah, yeah, let's Justin. do that. Yeah, oh, yeah, I love those guys. I'm actually yeah, want, a yeah. round table. I want to actually go up to Calgary because I'm looking at um, – I just moved recently. I live in California, but I'm looking to move again. Like, I'm looking to move to Washington State around there. And well, once I'm up there – Communist in Washington. Yeah. We're, so, we're going to Washington on March 21st. There. March 21st yeah. is a vision quest. Dude, I'd be on a big you know, plot of land, five acres down just outside of Wenatchee, Washington, and we'll be uh, getting into just it. Just hanging out. We'll just be hanging out for the yeah. weekend. So. Oh, man. Right, okay. Come Welcome. I would love you to You can come fly up. into Calgary and we'll drive you down. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right, you got to be here on the 19th. I'll bring a jacket for sure. I'll need one. <laughs> you need a fucking jacket. I need a fucking jacket totally. and boots. Yeah, hot. You don't need boots. And an umbrella. You don't. Definitely for Washington. It'll probably be pouring rain. Yeah, we keep that in mind. In March? No, it's still yeah. gonna be cold. Raining. It's not gonna be below zero there. Yeah, it is. Fuck. What are we doing out there in March? Yeah, it was just bad planning. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Vision Quest. Vision <laughs> Quest. The name the equinox. The name of property. Yeah. In the fucking freezing. No, we got a bunch of. I'm selling people hotel rooms for sixty bucks a night. Our good friend Brandon was nice enough to go out and source a nice cheap place. It's about twenty Close minutes by? from the oh, property. Okay, 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 where okay. everyone can stay. If we do two people per room, it's sixty bucks a okay, head okay, per okay, night. Okay, yeah. I'll do that, yeah. All right, Brandon. Unless right Michael on. buys that motorhome, then we'll just head down with him. Hey, my family lives up by Wenatchee. How do I meet up with you guys? You start by joining the chats, Adam, Grammarica.ca Grimerica .ca slash chats is one way, or you is spam gram. Grammaricamerica.com. <laughs> we'll get you out there. The commune is just outside of Wenatchee, about 20 minutes. Uh, how, are we, how are you getting supported, Justin? Do you, uh, are you taking support yet? No, I'm completely self funded, man. This is just a labor of love. This is just something that I Patreon do. Patreon or nothing like that? No, I, I don't. I, I, well, we gotta, we'll put a link in the show notes for all the Grammarica listeners, anyways. We're going to point everybody to Justin's YouTube channel. It's fantastic. Lots of great videos talking about all these topics. Lots of good. Um, graphics on there and, and it's very visual as well so keep up the good work man absolutely keep up the good work and we'll do that uh, round table with the snake bros real soon yeah. I think that'll be a fantastic chat hey I think it would be awesome I love those guys I, I, they, they put out great content too so yeah just hit me up on Twitter you know where to find me Darren so right on well until Justin has support page just throw that extra support our way grimerica.ca <laughs> slash support and uh, when you do get a Patreon or a PayPal going, you let us know, and we'll uh, spread it as far as we can. For sure, man. That, one great. day it'll great. happen. Great. It awesome. deserves to be supported. Thank you so much. All right. Th thank you for talking to me, guys. I'll, I'll catch you later. Okay. okay. See Bye, Justin. Peace. See you. <laughs>